Okay, it is 11.02, we're gonna get started. Uh, I wanna welcome everybody to the third annual NOTAM or Notice to Airmen Modernization Summit. Uh, for those joining for the first time, welcome. Um, for those that are returning, uh, welcome back. Um, we've got some important topics to cover on the agenda today. Um, we're hoping a uh, interactive discussion with the audience today. So um, some just logistics for all of you, please mute your microphones. Um, and please use the uh, raised hand function or enter your questions in the chat. We have a support team behind the scenes um, who's uh, monitoring for those and is gonna be trying to make sure that they get uh, answered and brought forth. Um, so please uh, um, use those processes. It'll help keep uh, make the best of this conversation. We're doing our best to make this a conversation. Uh, of course, times are limiting that with the current conditions brought about by the pandemic, uh, but we hope it's good enough uh, until we can be together again um, I want to remind everybody we're going to be recording this event and sharing it on the FA YouTube at a later date. Uh, now I'd like to introduce somebody who's been a strong advocate for our organization's focus on this. I have some information to share. Um, I'm excited to introduce uh, the Chief Operating Officer of the Air Traffic Organization for the FA, Terry Bristol, uh, to say a few words in a moment. Terry usually needs no introduction, but I don't want to miss an opportunity to proudly uh, brag and share that Terry's responsible for the safe, efficient, and secure air traffic services for approximately 50,000 uh, aircraft operating over the 30 million square miles every day uh, with the 32,000 employees that she leads. So very grateful to have you on today, welcome. Okay, thank you, Jim, and uh, welcome everyone. It is uh, great to be here uh, at this NOTA Modernization Summit. As Jim said, we look forward to seeing everyone in person again, uh, but we're just not there yet. So. Uh, thank you for contributing to our efforts to modernize uh, our aeronautical information so that it will be more accurate, more timely, and easy to use and easy to understand. And ultimately, that means it's safer. A year ago when we met, I highlighted some of the upcoming milestones that we're working on related to optimizing the notices that we issue to pilots when there's something unusual in the system like a runway closure or an equipment outage. We've made progress on a number of fronts that you're going to hear about today. I wanna to focus on one that we're especially enthusiastic about. You, our airspace users, have been telling us since our first NOTAM Summit in 2019, which seems not that long ago, uh, that you wanted a simplified machine interface to access NOTAM data. Based on your feedback, the FAA collaborated with NASA on an innovative approach to software development. We decided to issue a crowdsourced challenge to the industry, and we received some excellent inputs. Software developers from around the world collaborated to help us create a lightweight, flexible, and standardized application program interface for NOTAM data. And I'm pleased to announce that we have a NOTAM Application Programming Interface, or API. It will be available to the public next month at api.gov.faa.gov. So api.faa.gov. The interface will make important safety data more accessible to our entire aviation community. Now we expect it to be easy to use because NOTAM API will use open source technology standards that software developers around the world are familiar with, which simplifies access to and use of our data. In addition to providing quick and easy access to NOTAM data such as temporary flight restrictions and special activity airspace, the API will support ease of data integration. It'll provide query and filter capability and produce NOTAMs in three different formats. We also think that innovators might leverage the NOTAM data to create apps that further meet consumer needs, increasing equity in the aviation industry. So you're going to hear more about how anyone can access the new NOTAM API during the upcoming technology panel. And you'll also have an opportunity to ask questions. We hope that you do. This is a great opportunity. The motivation for the NOTAM API came from you. And we want it to be a great tool for you to ensure that you're fully aware of constraints that are in the system and how to avoid those. 
I want to assure you that NOTA modernization is one of the FAA's top safety priorities. It's certainly one of my top priorities. And we continue to work on other elements as we move toward a NOTAM repository that provides sortable, filterable, archivable, and machine readable functionality. So have a great meeting, everyone. I'm gonna turn this back over to James Linney. Thanks, Jim. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, appreciate that very much. Um, while being excited about the API, I uh, consumed too much water and now I'm, uh, now I'm choking. In <laughs> well, um, you take care of that. <laughs> thank you very much, ma'am. Appreciate your time for this and your attention and focus and support for all of us in doing this. Thank you. Um, we'll talk more about the details of that API that Terry just announced, so hang tight for those interested in knowing more about it. Uh, a little background for our discussions today for all of you. As you may have heard, the FA is undertaking our initiative to modernize our NOTAM systems. This effort in part from the requirements of the 2018 Reauthorization Act, um, as well as some feedback we receive from industry stakeholders like you, uh, those who use NOTAMs in their daily operations. The bulk of our most visible work to date has been around cleaning up the NOTAMs and related aeronautical information we provide to the users of the National Airspace System. This includes things like reducing the number of permanent NOTAMs in the system, not only in their number, but in their duration that they are in the system, updating and standardizing our NOTAM related information that are in our publications, uh, like chart supplements, and using those more frequently to get chart updates out sooner, streamlining the different data feeds and websites which provide NOTAMs, and in general, reducing the number of places our stakeholders have to look for NOTAMs or related information. We've made great progress in that. In the longer term, there's a couple of major activities we're excited about for with major benefits for the NOTAM systems and their users. First, we're working on upgrades to the system hardware and software to make the system more robust. Many of you may know the systems that we're working on today uh, are very, uh, very much legacy systems. And we need to build those to be standards today to more robust architecture so we can build upon them. The second major activity and the one you're more likely visible to the pilots out there in the community today we're working on is to conform to the ICAO standards for NOTAMs, including the ICAO format for NOTAMs. The move to the ICAO format will improve the sorting, filtering, readability of NOTAMs, and we're excited for this improvement uh, for the user experience in this way. Both these activities are long-term and are going to re uh, require a lot of planning, engineering, and acquisition processes. There's work to be done. The FAA has budget processes we have to follow and authorizations and appropriations that have to come through. But we're hopeful that we'll be able to stay on that track and continue to deliver on those promises that we all need. You'll hear much more about these ongoing through the summit. And I'm going to run through our agenda for the day for all of you that uh, haven't had a chance to read through what's on the sessions for today. During our first panel, we're going to talk about connecting to NOTAM data. We'll discuss the enhancements to the federal NOTAM system that make it easier to connect and filter the NOTAMs. And after a brief introduction by the FAA, uh, a joint FA industry panel will explore the perspectives on these recent enhancements. We'll also have more details on connecting to the NOTAM API that Terry just mentioned, uh, which will be useful for all of you. Again, all of these sessions are meant to be interactive, so we're hoping you start to think about your questions now and may even put them in the chat so that we're prepared to answer them in today's session. During our second panel, the implementation of the International Civil Aviation Organization, or ICAO, standards. We'll be discussing how ICAO standards benefit this aviation community and the implications for the stakeholders in terms of policy and technology issues. Uh, we'll be joined by our colleagues from NAV Canada, so thank them uh, for joining us today, who recently went through this transition and have a valuable perspective to share. I've enjoyed um, having conversations with them in the last year and a half, uh, and we can learn from some of their early, uh, early challenges as well as successes. During our third and final panel, Improving Airport-Related NOTAMs, We'll discuss how airport NOTAMs are issued and managed, as well as these changes to the federal NOTAM system that are gonna improve the processes to use airport NOTAMs. Of course, as you would expect, at the end of our summit, we'll have a brief closing wrap up and uh, we'll discuss other ways you can stay informed, including references to the information that's provided here, the API website, a number of our application uh, information, and be able to provide you all um, reference material that uh, can be helpful for you once you leave the session today. As I've said before, we encourage you to submit your questions in the chat box, uh, raise your hand using the reactions tab, and our moderators are gonna bring your questions and comments forward to the discussion. Uh, but first, to get things started today, I'd like to do, introduce Heidi Williams, Senior Director of Air Traffic Services and Infrastructure at the National Business Aviation Association. Heidi is the industry lead for our efforts to modernize NOTAMs. 
She is the industry co-chair of our Aeronautical Information Services Reform Coalition, a group of airlines and industry groups that have made it their mission to improve aeronautical information, including those that pilots and operators rely on every day to fly to the NAS. We are, and I dare say uh, you are, truly fortunate to have Heidi as your industry chair. Um, handing it to you, Heidi, to share your perspective on how we got here and where we're going. Welcome, Heidi. Well, good morning, James. Thanks so much for the introduction. I think we know many of the folks on the Zoom today were excited for a robust discussion today about the three topics that you've, you've spoken to. And honestly, super excited for Terry to announce the API, right? So uh, a little bit of context and how we got here. Um, around 2018, there was a group of industry that went to the FAA, talked about some of the challenges and uh, things that we perceive were maybe some barriers to NOTA modernization and aeronautical information modernization. Um, FAA immediately responded. They went into action. They did an analysis and ultimately stood up the AIS coalition uh, in, in joint fashion with industry. And we've been having meetings monthly for almost two years, right? Um, and the, the, we've had a lot of great discussion, but we've also seen some great forward progress. And that API that Terry spoke to this morning came out of some of those robust discussions. I think it was our first summit. We all got together. The number of the users suggested that API and how it would be, a, in fact, a great way forward. FA responded. So we're very appreciative. We're excited about the announcement that came out today. And more than that, I'm really excited about the robust discussion that we're going to have with each of you today. So James, thank you so much to you, the FAA team, not only for all of your hard work over the last two years in terms of modernizing the system, but also for all of the work to bring us together for this discussion today and for the excellent panels that I'm looking forward to. So I'm going to turn it back to you and let you introduce our first panel. Thanks again. Wonderful. Thank you, Heidi. Appreciate that. Uh, it is a community issue, this uh, NOTAMS challenge, and it's, uh, there's no success without all of us. Um, and I appreciate your partnership and commitment and also holding us accountable to those things that we want to do together. So thank you. Um, so we will transition to our first session. Uh, with that, I'd like to introduce Jerry Gross and Alex Murray to come on the screen. Uh, Jerry and Alex are going to provide some background on context um, for connecting to NOTAM data. Um, they're going to have a brief presentation, and per your all's request and conversations that Heidi and I have had, we really want to make this conversational, so there'll be a little bit of background information for context. The majority of our time today will be left for conversation, um, and the, after their brief discussion, we're going to introduce the panel uh, who will be on, and uh, I'll run through that introduction uh, when they're done with their quick introduction here. Welcome, Jerry and Alex. Uh, over to you. Okay. Good morning, um, and thank you very much to uh, James and Heidi and Terry for those welcome comments. Um, I do have the pleasure of being a part of the first panel around the topic that I'm very passionate and, and I'm very excited about, and that is connecting to NOTAM data and connecting to it via our SWIM system. So I'm very excited about what the FAA and what we're doing around NOTAMs. And I'm very glad to know that we're utilizing the uh, SWIM system to, to offer uh, many of our native, our NOTAM data sets. So let's go ahead and get to it. Um, so again, thank you for this opportunity. Next slide. So what I am going to um, share with you a little bit here, and many of you here, I looked on the, uh, Zoom register a little bit there, and we have approaching 300 people attending. And I believe that many of you are very, very familiar with the SWIM concept, uh, very familiar with the NOTAM data. Uh, so what I'm sharing here probably be a lot of information you're very familiar with, but what I'm attempting to do is give you options and insight into how to use the many offerings around accessing NOTAM data that we have. And we have three that I think are the right access points. They're all based on machine to machine interfaces and they provide the plethora of NOTAM aeronautical information that, that we currently have to offer. We've been working very hard as um, 
Terry and James and Heidi have mentioned over the past two years, trying to streamline our interfaces and bring you access points that really um, help you on your back end operations. And we believe these three that I'm going to talk about right now really are the three that will provide and offer you NOTAMs in whatever your particular stakeholder needs are. Um, again, they're machine to machine. All of these three um, access points um, use the federal NOTAM system or FNS as the authoritative source. All three of them have some component of a swim access uh, point. So we're really trying to leverage um, swim uh, very much in our offering of NOTAM data. So the first one is the Federal NOTAM Publication Service, which again is a SWIM service that you would subscribe to. This is a pub sub service via SWIM, uh, uh, via JMS over SWIM. What this offers is um, a full data set of our NOTAM data. Um, I'm sorry, not a full data set, the publish and subscribe capability of all of our active NOTAMs and changes to NOTAMs. So it is a pushing the data out to users via a SWIM service. Um, this uses, um, again, JMS, and it's a very um, system to system machine interface. The NOTAMs are in real time. And every time there is a change to a NOTAM, your system will receive a message update via SWIM of that NOTAM change. Now, one key thing that I wanna highlight about the NOTAM publication service, and I'm really highlighting this, is that it's a pub service of all the NOTAM changes. What you will need coupled with this is our FNS initial load or what we call fill. And fill is that initial data set of all of the current active NOTAMs the NPS service is all of the NOTAM changes that are being issued and, and, and released as time goes on. So fill is all your current, I mean, your active ones that have been issued prior to you subscribing to the N NPS service. And then the NPS service provides you a push of all of those active changes. So this is a very comprehensive service, but you would need both of those SWIM subscriptions to get your comprehensive set. The fill service is a cloud-based service. You would only need to do that one time. And that is, as it says in the name, to provide an initial load. So there's a NOTAM publication service via SWIM, a pub sub capability via JMS. The next one is the one that I probably don't even really need to say a whole lot about because Terry Bristol did an awesome job of making that announcement and sharing with you what really that API is. It's our application programming interface that through industry um, coordination and collaboration, we responded to your need. So this provides NOTAMs via REST using API standards. Again, it's based off of the SWIM uh, data, FNS is the authoritative source for NOTAM data, but there's more than just NOTAM data. There's TFR data there, as Terry mentioned, as well as the special activity airspace. So this is for our, our, our hiring users who want to do an application an API interface. You want to do some queries. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But this is the second offering that we have, which is that API. Um, very shortly, as Terry said, we have made that um, all the platforms available. We've authorized all the data through our internal systems. So in the coming days and throughout the next couple of weeks, we will be reaching out to users to provide you the access keys and tokens to access this API. So stay tuned for that. The third offering is our aeronautical common service that we refer to as ACS. So this is the integrated aeronautical information feed available via SWIM. So when we say integrated, what we're talking about is more than just NOTAMs. There's obstacle data, there's special uh, use airspace schedule data, there's um, NAVAID data. 
So there's an integrated suite of data available via this ACS suite, um, ACS SWIM service, again, targeted for those of you who need more of an integrated data set and you wanna do get a full picture situational awareness of a particular airport, or just have that integrated aspect of data. So, so those are the three offerings of access to NOTAM data. They all have FNS as the authoritative sources and some other systems. Um, and they're all really have some aspect of a swim fee. So let me try and uh, via the next slide, really kind of walk you through what is the use case. So as a user for each of these different access points, which one should you target? Hold on one second, I gotta move my screen out of the way. So this first one is for, uh, again, the NPS, the NOTAM Publication Service via SWIM. This one is really targeted for those of you who want to establish your own large NOTAM database within your own system. Um, again, you would have to have two components of this service to have that full database of NOTAMs. You need the NPS, which is a constant pushing um, NOTAM updates to you, as well as that one-time fill. Um, this is for um, you maintaining your own database, doing your own local processing and flight planning needs. So the, this is for users who really have those high-end back-end data system needs. Um, flight planning systems or third-party systems that um, want to access historical data, we would recommend the NPS service via SWIM as an option you would target for those particular use cases. Okay, so let's go to the next one. Um, the next one is again, um, our highly publicized, our API. So this is for users who are looking for just a subset of data. You want to do very specific queries. You do not want to invest in your own local database. You may be looking for NOTAM data or TFR data or special activity airspace data for a very specific location. You want to develop some mobile apps. Um, so this is for very specific query users. You don't want to make the investment in having your own database this would be the use case for that particular type of user. Okay, now let's go to the last one. The last one again is that integrated aeronautical information or ACS. This is for when you're looking for more than notes. You want all of the information for a particular airport. You want a situational awareness for that particular airport around the obstacles, around the navigs, uh, the, NOTAM, uh, the NOTAM for that particular airport. So this is when you're looking for an integrated set of data where you have your, again, backend systems where you can do that, that query, that analysis, those very specific uh, uses of data around a very specific location. So ACS is integrated, but it can be integrated for a very specific location. So with those three options, I hope that that is giving you a little more insight into all that we're constantly talking about in terms of our NOTAM offering. The key things I wanna leave you with is that the authoritative sources are from the FAA systems, FNS and others, and SWIM is the primary centralized um, access point for all of these. Some of them are cloud-based such as Phil, the API accesses the SWIM cloud distribution service or SDS but they all have some aspect of a SWIM fee. So since I've done such a pitch of how SWIM is tied to all of these use cases, next we're gonna have Alex Murray walk you through an overview of SWIM and talk a little bit more about how to get a SWIM connection, which I think many of you do, but if there's anybody out there who has not, I think Alex will share some information with you on how to access SWIM and how that on-ramping and swim access process works. So Alex, I turn it over to you. Thank you, Jerry. Um, good morning, everyone. So first starting off, what is swim? Like Jerry said, a lot of you probably already know what swim is, but just in case someone does not, you give a little speech here. 
So SWIM is really, it provides infrastructure and standards and services needed to optimize secure exchange of relevant data for NAS systems and the aviation community. So before SWIM, you know, everything was interconnected system to system. Each system interface had their own protocol, potentially some of them were binary. Um, and so when you wanted to interface with different systems, you had to develop these specific uh, ICDs and such. When SWIM came, it decided to get away from that and standardize all those system interfaces to be a standard type of web services or JMS for PubSub, and then define the standards of the data in a common format, such as flight information exchange model or weather information exchange model or the aeronautical exchange model, which is applicable to NOTAMs. And in doing so, uh, several NAS systems, such as the federal NOTAM system, as well as Wimsker and ITWIS and as, uh, others that you see here, uh, onboarded to SWIM and now are providing their data. And this data covers all the phases of flight. So instead of having to interface each of these systems independently and figure out how do they speak and what language do they speak, you would interface to SWIM and then you can consume those data for your needs all over the same interface and via a standard uh, message format. And then going into how you actually access NOTAMs on SWIM in the next slide, um, NOTAM is distributed through three different services as Jerry had mentioned. Um, the primary one is the AIM FNS system, the federal NOTAM system. And the second one on SWIM is the AIM Aeronautical Common Service. Um, there's three main ways that you can access NOTAM through these. And one is the AIM FNS JMS with Phil, as Jerry had mentioned. Um, how that works, um, just a little description here is the AIM FNS system up there at the top will publish their NOTAMs, goes into the SWIM message broker system, and then the external users depicted on the bottom can access them through two primary means today. One is via the SCDS or the SWIM Cloud Distribution Service, which is a one-way subscription service. It's self-service. You go there, you create an account via self-registry, you can submit a request, and then within a very short time, you can get approval and start consuming those NOTAMP updates right away. Now, as Jerry mentioned, for you to actually leverage that in a real sense, you need to have a baseline of those NOTAMPs. And so on the bottom left, we have AIM Fill depicted here, which provides that initial baseline of all active NOTAMs. Um, that's done through a SFTP cloud connection. Um, that is not SWIM, but it is a way that they knew they needed to get those initializations out. And when you onboard to SWIM, uh, we can work with you to get access to that fill account as well. The second means um, is through the NAS Enterprise Security Gateway. So our mission partners or airlines that need it for you know, airline flight planning and such uh, require to access those no attempts through the security gateways. And in doing so, they use IPsec VPN. So the primary way of accessing data for those mission partners is that they access them using the pub sub as well um, and fill for initialization. There is a, an old uh, web service for NDS that is for those mission partners. Um, and eventually we'll have ACS as the Interpol Common Services a service for um, requesting NOTAMs. Now, ACS is uh, gets their NOTAMs from FNS. And as Jerry mentioned, it's integrated. So other NOTAMs information, such as NAVAIDs, once queried upon, will have references to any NOTAMs associated with that. Now, because the ACS is a web service and SCDS is only a one way, the only way to get access that through the, is through the NESG. But SWIM is currently working on developing and deploying an enhanced SWIM cloud service, which is depicted here on the right. What that will allow us to do is those mission partners can get access to web service traffic two-way via the same methods that SCDS does. So self-service, short onboarding time, visibility into all the metrics and statuses for those requests. So there's a lot of different ways to access SWIM. There's a lot of support in helping you get there. And so if you have any questions, um, what you can do is you can go to our SWIM portal, which is on the next, or the, the process for getting uh, connected is on our next slide. Um, it's pretty straightforward. We try to streamline this as much as possible. Um, we've had a lot of feedback from users over the years. And so today we took a, you know, what used to be a six month process down to a matter of minutes. And so through the SWIM Cloud Distribution Service, uh, which is in the SWIFT portal, the SWIM FA Industry Portal, um, you can submit requests for subscriptions to NOTAMS data and within minutes you can get approved um, once you've signed the applicable access agreements, which is all depicted on the portal site. Um, if you want to connect via the direct FA NEC gateways, you can submit a request for that and the approved users will get access. Um, and then eventually, as I depicted, the enhanced SWIM cloud service will be the future way of getting access to two-way web service data for SWIM over a TLS. No IPsec VPN is required on those connections, trying to make it as much as easy as possible for our users. 
So if we go to the next slide, we have how you actually can find out more. So if you go to the SWIFT portal, create an account, again, self-register, anybody can do it. There is a support button. And once you go to that page, you can either look at frequently asked questions, look at some guides, um, or if you particularly have a question, you can click the ask a question button, submit a question that will go directly to our some support team. We'll get back to you right away uh, with addressing any of your questions. You'll notice there is a call help desk and an email help desk there. Those are for production operational connections. So once you do have a operational connection to either SCDS or the NESG, and you have an operational issue for whatever reason, 24 seven, there's an operational support team there to help you. Please don't call them for questions. Generally submit that through questions on the ask a question. Those are primarily used for just production operational use. There's also a little uh, click there where you can go directly to the SWIFT portal. Um, again, the address is portal.swim.faa.gov. We're here to help and can answer any questions that you have. And once you get connected, if you've got questions on how to use the data or how to create clients for it, we can help however you need. Thank you. Appreciate that, Jerry and Alex. Thank you both very much. I'm happy to say we are getting some questions in the chat and uh, we're, we're polling those on the side and grouping them together. And uh, we're going to introduce those to our panel members um, for our first panel after we do a quick uh, introduction of um, the rest of the panel. You've already uh, heard from, from Heidi and myself, um, and Jerry and Alex are both here. Um, we also want to bring up uh, Joe Olson and uh, Michael Carroll from um, the uh, Delta Airlines. And uh, I want to make sure that so uh, Jill Olson's from the FAA. You can see their bios up there on, on what they do. We'll, We'll, um, we'll skip through those. I do want to ask as new members join the panels today, if you could, um, um, and, and we you know leave up Heidi's bio and then we can scroll through the rest of the bios for the team here until we get to um, uh, the, the panel members who haven't introduced why they're here today and why they're excited about. I think everybody knows why Heidi's excited to be here today and myself. Um, let's let the others introduce um, themselves today. So let's jump to either Jerry, Alex, Jill, or Michaels. There we go. Um, so, Jerry, we got your bio up in front of us, so no need to read through your uh, significant accomplishments and work experience. It's just a quick question for you, and I'm going to ask all the panel members. Um, what do you, why are you, why are you excited to be here today? I'm excited to be here today because I like the change efforts that we're implementing. I like the direction the agency is going in terms of data sharing and, data and information management and utilizing our platforms, uh, SWIM, the API. So I'm excited that we're offering those options to industry and I love being a part of that. Thank you, ma'am, appreciate that. Alex, to you, same question. Um, why are you excited to be here today? Well, uh, so I have a background in, in aviation, so I am a pilot. And so I know what it's like to, to use NOTEMS in, in the field today and actually see the technology where it's advanced and the options that's available to industry to innovate and provide new services to pilots like myself and others um, is uh, very interesting and it's uh, really nice to see where it's come. Fantastic, thank you, sir, appreciate it. Um, Jill Olson, let's go to you. Uh, why are you happy to be here today? Hi, James, and hi, everyone. I'm just excited to be here because this is like such an exciting time in the world of node modernization as well as aeronautical information modernization. and. Especially, I'm so excited about the release of the Aeronautical Common Service uh, this month. It's just, it's gonna be a huge transition. And this is also a great time for us just to hear from our stakeholders and answer questions and have an interactive time. So really excited to be here. And thanks for the invite. Wonderful, thank you, ma'am. Michael, to you, sir. Hey, uh, thanks, James. Uh, for us and for me, um, running, a, uh, running the NOTAM system here at Delta, uh, I'm, I'm excited to be here mainly for the reason of I always like to be up to speed on what the FAA modernization is going to be for the NOTAM system and how we can leverage that to uh, bolster our NOTAM database here at Delta and supply the NOTAMs to all of our dependent applications uh, throughout the airline. So I'm excited to be here and excited to share what we do at Delta. Wonderful. Thank you and thank you all. Um, uh, we're, uh, we're ready to get started. So uh, we've got some questions in the chat, uh, the TF. Um, Heidi, where would you like to start? So maybe we'll start with a question from Brian Smith that was posed in the chat. And Jerry, to you and the, the PMO team, 
Will any NOTAM modernization effort provide more streamlined access to historic NOTAMs um, and NOTAMs in order to mine that safety uh, insights that may be lurking there? This is a great one to start. Yes, thank you, Heidi. Yeah, this question seems to be related to um, storing uh, NOTAMs and accessing historical NOTAMs. And absolutely, the SWIM um, NPS feed does from that fill initial load provide all of the active NOTAMs and all of the historical NOTAMs. And um, the NOTAM search has access to NOTAMs for, I believe, the past three years. So the NOTAM search, again, is a human interface through a website, and the swim feed clearly is a machine interface. But those are the two options that you can definitely get historical data uh, from NOTAMs that have been active in the past. Yeah, fantastic. I know I personally have looked through the archives on the NOTAM search, and it's a really valuable tool. So appreciate that question, Brian. Um, looks like we do have another one from Alan O'Toole that uh, asking what's the coverage for non-US NOTAMs going to be? And maybe again, Jerry, for, for you and the team. Getting off of mute here. So yeah, our, our NOTAM system has um, international NOTAMs as well in our, in our data feed, if that's specifically what they're asking. We definitely have international notions that um, that are sent to us, shall I say it that way. Yeah. Yep. And a related question to it was, are, is there data for notums global or limited to the NAF? And the answer is, as we get them, they're yeah. available. Is that accurate? As we get them, yeah. Hopefully that answered Michael's question as well as Alan's, I hope. Just take one up. Hey, look. Go ahead. Okay. So we do have another one from George uh, for, again, Jerry and PMO. Will the API allow for integration of the new graphical NOTAM standards into an incident management software system of the operator's choice? So I, am I, yeah, I'm off mute. Yes. So yes, I believe that the API does allow for the ingesting of uh, the graphical information associated with that, with that NOTAM, if that's, if that's the question you're asking. Jerry, while we're on the topic of that, the API, I know we saw another question earlier in the chat about, uh, is there anything more than NOTAMs that are included in the API? It, it, can you speak to that one as well? Yeah, so right now, you know, this is a very interesting question because right now the um, API that we are offering has NOTAM data as well as temporary flight restriction data and special activity airspace data. So those are three different um, data types that we have in the aeronautical information area. But what I believe and I be think where we're going is nothing precludes us from adding other data sets. Um, so the ACS if you follow what I was saying earlier, the ACS does take it a step further and bring in the navates and the obstacle data. So it may be as we go forward with the API, we may be able to offer some of that data as well through that API interface. You know, and maybe we're, we'll be combining, merging all of these together. Because um, as I was presenting on the different options, it may sound like, oh, it's all the same data, but it's really targeted to your use cases, what type of investment the end user is available to make on, on ingesting that data. That's why we have those multiple different options. It's really trying to target different user needs. And as we add data over time, it may draw you to one machine interface versus another. Just as a reminder, while we're getting the questions in, uh, we're going to do our best to keep up with them and answer them all here. We're also going to be logging them to make sure that if there's any we didn't get to, we can get to uh, afterwards. But also, we did want to make this interactive. As I said at the intro, it's really hard to replicate a conference room <laughs> in these COVID times. So the, we did the best we could. So if you want to raise your hand and have a conversation about a topic, that's why we're here today. So feel free to do that. We do have a team watching to see where hands are raised. 
Um, if your question might be more uh, sort of a black and white question, you're looking for an answer, um, certainly to chat and we can get to them as they're allowed. But I just want to make sure folks know that we we did want to make this an interactive conversation as well. So if folks want to engage in the conversation, please raise your hand. Yeah, and I, I want to encourage industry. We do want this to be interactive. So I would love to have some of you raise your hands and jump on while, while we're looking for those. I'm going to pose just a couple more out of the chat feature um, because I think, Jerry, a couple of these might be fairly easy. Do we know when snowdoms will be fully ingested? So as easy as that sounds, I'm not sure that I have the answer right readily available. So that may be one I'll have to take an action throughout the panel and, and get back to you. And, and someone on my team, I'm sure, will shoot me an answer here shortly. Yeah, makes makes perfect sense. I think IOU is more than acceptable for this discussion, right? I don't think any of us came to the, the discussion today thinking you would have all the answers, Sherry. So that sounds great. Hey, Heidi, this is Jill. I can try to answer that question. We kind of anticipated something may pop up from there. And so uh, someone from Jerry's team actually kind of had an answer for it. So Jerry may not have seen that. So I can kind of give a little bit of an update. Um, so international notums, which includes snow tans, and there is a recent change in their format, um, are ingested into the system using the legacy USNS. So as we are transitioning over to FNS, we've had to stop making changes to USNS. So this isn't so this is included as part of this migration. So once this happens, then we're going to have that single notum system. So they will be made available. So it's right now because we're making these trans this transition from USNS to FNS, we are not able to digest the snow tams. I hope that helps answer the question. And if yeah, not, maybe someone from uh, Jerry's team, we've got a, some people on, on, on the backside trying to help us out a little bit too, since and there's others that have more knowledge. <laughs> a more, uh, one additional element to that. And if we need to research it and come back and, and cover it again, when do we think we'd be able to make some changes in the system to improve on that um, in the legacy, <laughs> if possible? And if it's not possible, which I suspect is sort of where we uh, might be going, let's just be clear about that and, and why. It's a definitely interest topic. I know that uh, um, I believe United submitted that one as well um, for the question yeah. today. Definitely, and, and especially with cold weather ops approaching, right? That always becomes a, a bigger challenge and something that's on the mind of most of the industry. So, um, and, and while we're thinking through that, maybe there's some research being done. And again, we might not be able to answer all of these today, but there's certainly items that we're going to have in a parking lot that we'll work through through the coalition and, and ICAO transition discussions to follow. So um, maybe another question for Arvid. This is a, is there a timeline for all NOTAMs to be in the standard AIXM format um, and for all regions? Do, do we have, uh, do we know there? So the um, all NOTAMs right now are provided in AXM today via our NOTAM distribution service. While the digital NOTAMs are verbose in nature, free form are not that verbose, but all of them are in AXM today. Fantastic. So maybe we'll, we'll transition and have one for our industry partner, James, if you're good with that. Um, so, Michael, maybe you can share with us a little bit about what was Delta's experience uh, in using NOTAMs from SWIM. I know you guys have done a transition and onboarded with SWIM. Could you share a bit of your experience with us? Uh, for us, we use we still have our legacy um, connections, uh, requests, reply, and using the VPN. Uh, we also ingest using uh, the SWIM. Uh, the way that we at Delta have our NOTAM system set up and configured, we have, we have I think, about five or six different connections that we have to the FAA um, for redundancy. And we take all of our NOTAM information, all the NOTAM information that we get, and we really base it on a whichever NOTAM uh, feed gets it to us first into our own database wins, basically, and that becomes the NOTAM of record. And from there, um, that goes through and it's, it stays in, in our proprietary NOTAM database that we have set up here at Delta, which then gets broadcast out to uh, the dispatchers, 
uh, the pilots via the flight plans, and then um, also some other applications that we have uh, that use NOTAMs uh, throughout, the, throughout the enterprise. Um, I was not on board when we went through and actually started on the uh, set up the SWIM system. Um, I know we've had it established for quite some time now, and I know it is a, uh, it is a system that we have that uh, continues to uh, feed our main NOTAM database. Fantastic. Thanks, Michael. I, I, it's helpful to understand what your experiences have been and kind of it sounds like you're in a bit of a hybrid system still as you're onboarding. Um, and, and certainly other users that are on who may be already onboarded with SWIM might be nice to hear from, from others as well. So if you have an experience uh, as you've onboarded to SWIM, I think we would love for you to raise your hand and, and share that. So maybe another question for Jerry and the team. Um, speaking of API and Axum, uh, will those th that feed provide graphical shape information for airspace NOTAMs, TFRs, um, MOAs, military operating areas, um, restricted areas, et cetera? And, and I, the other question related to that, Jerry, as you're coming off mute, is there a web page that provides access to graphical NOTAMs today? So the first part of it, the API does have the capability to show the uh, geometries, the, the graphical um, aspects of those nodes. When we did a demo a few months back with some of the um, AIS coalition members, we were able to demonstrate how you not only bring in the text of that nodum, but as well, the graphical depiction of what that nodum looks like at a, at a particular airport. So it does have that, that capability. Um, what was the second part of that? Um, the second part was around, is there a website that provides for those graphical, uh, access to graphical NUDEMs today? Hmm. Well, we have the, um, t the TFR website and the special activity airspace uh, website, and I believe those have a graphical component to them. But again, I'll look in the chat uh, to see what my team is responding. And I see they're saying there is no web page for that today. But you're right, Jerry, we do have resources, right? So the SUA.FA.gov, I believe it is, and I might be quoting that wrong, but I've used the SUA website as well mm -hmm. as the TR website, and both do have a graphical component. Graphical component yeah. Yeah. We don't necessarily have one website that, that provides all of the graphical data, but those are two resources that exist today. Right, but I would encourage users who are considering the API access to take a look at that because what you are able to ingest is the geometries associated with that and bring that into your own graphical application or tool, and you'll be able to see that depiction similar that we did in the, de in the demo. Fantastic. There was one in there, Heidi, that um, I can tee up for others to offer around because I've been uh, neck deep in this one since the end of May around the uh, reliability, redundancy, resiliency of NOTAM dotage. Um, so, you know, with all systems, there's a there's level of redundancy and capability built in. Nothing is infinitely redundant. That's why we all have um, challenges. That's why there's ticketing issues. That's why there are flight planning problems. That's why, unfortunately for us, when a center goes out, we lose that center's airspace capability. Um, there's, a, there's a fair amount of redundancy in the existing system today. It's not where we want it to be for the future, which is why we're investing in modernizing that infrastructure. Um, for those that are not aware, there's a large infrastructure in Oklahoma City and a limited capability in Atlantic City today for the FA for most of our NOTAM support capabilities. Um, however, because of the uh, infrastructure limitations, the age of the software, amongst other things, there are certain limitations to how we can back that up. What we've been working on since the uh, disaster in, in May, we had a uh, torrential flood and construction and water intrusion um, and sort of a, uh, well, not sort of, absolutely a, a worst perfect storm event in Oklahoma City that caused some uh, outages of some servers 
Um, what we've done since then uh, is improve the ability to swing over to the disaster recovery system in two hours from a decision. Uh, it was estimated to be six hours at the time of that event, so that's been reduced dramatically. And also we've been working on a way for industry to get NOTAM data information, um, both the legacy NOTAM information, as well as new candidate NOTAMs that might be published during an outage. Uh, again, that would only be for an outage that should last uh, less than three hours because in the first 30, 40 minutes, we're gonna know whether we've got a true disaster or a system that can be reset and recovered in Oklahoma City. A dual, it would take a dual channel failure in Oklahoma City for us to have this problem. Um, but that interim capability um, we're still finalizing, allowing the flight service stations, the Alaska Flight Service, and our federal NOTAM uh, manager to enter candidate NOTAMs in. How industry will get access to those, we're working through two options. One, certainly it'll be available on the search site, so folks could go into the search site that they use today to find the new candidate NOTAMs. But what we're hoping we can also do is make a downloadable file um, and structure so that folks can download uh, at whatever frequency they need, minutes, every five minutes, whatever, the latest list of candidate NOTAMs that have been put in during the extent of this outage, which again, should only be a couple of hour, multi-hour event. Um, a full disaster in Oklahoma City would, would mandate we swing over to our backup system and backup capability, which would take two hours to do. And of course, when we come back from the backup system to the primary, we'd have to schedule another outage for the National Aerospace System and NOTAMs, which we wanna be very careful to make that decision because any swing over will require a swing back. So that would be two outages. So it's a difficult thing to predict when we would happen. The best objective is to continue to harden that facility in Oklahoma City and uh, which they, they have done quite a bit too, including a lot of power upgrades and uh, flood uh, resistance and uh, water detection and 24 seven monitoring and uh, et cetera. So, and, uh, so that's where we stand today for the legacy NOTAM system. Where we want to be is a NOTAM system that's been upgraded to live on NAS architecture in our critical air traffic control facilities infrastructure that uh, will give us uh, the more traditional NAS-like service availability that we need for this essential service. So hopefully that helps. Yeah. It definitely does. I know you've been immersed in, in kind of solutioning that one, Jim, so, so thank you. Um, Jill, maybe a question for you, if you don't mind. Um, so why are some domestic NOTAMs not distributed in the international format and um, while others are? <clears throat> that unmute button likes to hide from me. So uh, a great question and, and the issue. So as we know, the U.S. currently, um, the official version of the U.S. is domestic, right? Where you have not transitioned to ICAO. And we do translate a subset um, as a courtesy to the ICAO format. But um, the intent, though, is for people to use the domestic version for a most complete and accurate list. And I said, as soon as we can make this ICAO transition, as we'll hear more about in our next uh, topic of conversation, then everything will be in ICAO format. It's just right now, we just don't do everything. It's just a subset of the notes that we'll do as a, an ICAO format. Great. So it sounds like a partial, really to get folks using and, and relating to that ICAO format and make that transition when everything will be ICAO format, correct, Jill? Correct. That is correct. Okay. Thank you. All right. Let's see. I know we have plenty of questions that are exploding in the chat, so we're really happy for that interaction. So maybe a question for Jerry and the team. Why does the FNS system display data first in a NAS format and then users have to first enter the NOTAM and then display in an IKO format. I think the thought is, at least from the industry participant asking the question, if we're moving to IKO, why don't we just display both in a selectable format on the front screen? Thoughts on that? Well, in our NOTAM search tool, we do have a feature there where we are attempting where possible to display the NOTAM in the domestic format and then give you an option to click for the ICAO format. Um, we have some of that available now. 
in a release that we are doing of Notum Search and FNS coming in the spring, we are going to do that as full scale as possible as sort of our part one um, implementation of ICAO. So all, displaying all the Notums domestic in an ICAO format, but they are right now primarily in a domestic format. And that ICAO format is just a supplemental view to assist you and get you prepared for when we make that full transition. And, and really, that, I'm sorry, Heidi, that goes back to what I was just saying that for now, domestic is the official version. So, yeah, it makes sense. Thank you, Jill and Jerry. It makes sense. And, and I think we're trying to get users used to that ICAO format, but it's it's not our, pri our primary right now, right? Will be. So a uh, question from, from Mark, have we ever considered using an app as a user interface instead of a web browser? Jim, maybe we'll uh, shoot that one over to you. I wanna let Jerry answer this one. She should get the credit for this answer. Well, so sort of in my intro and, and even my sort of why I'm glad I'm here today is I do believe the F, we are moving as much as we can, you know, as a federal agency and using technology and all these, you know, options to offer data in the latest technology. Um, we don't have an app yet, but believe, there have been many discussions behind the scenes. Um, what we are doing, we believe, is offering you the data, particularly in the API, that gives it to you in a format that is an easy lift for you on your own system developer side. Right. But yeah. right now, as an agency, we haven't moved to the app, but there are conversations and there are discussions. We've got some app development that goes on inside the agency, and I'm a big believer in um, you know the, the public service and our desire to provide capabilities for the public. However, really difficult for us to keep pace with the, the, the field and the industry. In, for some example, the, the security requirements on any development we do are extremely high and challenging. So uh, even loading the API onto a website for download has taken four months to get security authorization approval, Jerry. So because of the, the, the criticality of cybersecurity now, it is at its highest level of attention in the federal government. So um, uh, the, the previous administrator of the FAA and since then have, been, have made some, uh, I think, really elegant ways of describing how the government, is, you know, us in the FAA really being a data provider Right. Um, you know, if uh, the example I've seen used before is when you when you go to the NOAA website and trying to find the weather in your location versus typing weather in your search browser, I think is a good indication of where um, industry innovation can keep up with pace that um, we really want to. But as Jerry well, well said, we want to get the data to you in a way that's understandable and usable and let innovation thrive from there and let um, applications be built from there. And I, from, from the industry part, I think the FAA does a great job of that, especially if anyone's ever went to or participated in the SWIFT conference. Um, SWIFT is a great way if you're, if you're new into this or you want to get in and start using SWIM data. I've seen some great things with, done with some really smart people at SWIFT conferences within 20 or 30 minutes of really sharp people who have the, the technical skills on the laptop to get their swim data turned on at Swift and within 90 minutes are displaying something that they just created using the swim data. So I, for, for me and from the industry perspective, I, I would like the FAA to focus on making sure we have a solid data stream and allow the industry to then take that data stream and go ahead and, and morph it into what we would like to see. Um, you know, if the FAA focuses on the solid data stream, you know, ABC company can, take that data and do what they want with it. And we get Delta can look at that same data and see how we want to use it. And our, our partners over at United American Southwest can take that same data and mold it to their operation. So uh, I think for me in an industry perspective, solid data feed is the most important thing that for us and you know let the industry take the data and mold it to how we want. Yeah, it can be really difficult for us to predict all the various instantiations of needs for such a diverse yeah. community. So, all right. And the speed at which the commercial marketplace, Michael, you just drove that point home, right? The speed at which commercial marketplace brings those things to market is usually a, a bit quicker. So you, good, good uh, I think, synergy from the entire panel on that one. 
And I think, you know, I'll add one more thing. So the crowdsourcing elements with the API challenge that NASA led for us that we funded is a great indication of you get people a little information they and they ran, right? And now hope, our hope is you have a, a larger set of people that understand the technology, understand what it means, understand what things stand for, that, that, is, a, that is a community you can all lean into to innovate um, and build the things you need to build. Absolutely agreed. So maybe another question for Jerry, is the graphical system based on the Esri GIS system? So as I look in the chat, um, um, Heidi, as you said, I see quite a few questions there around the graphical format. And so just to provide a little clarity, the graphical uh, format is provided in the GeoJSON format. Um, and so, and again, we did some demonstrations. And what I would like to say is we now that we're go live on the API, we certainly are more than happy to host some other demonstrations to help users really understand what we're offering here and how quickly the data ingests and how quickly you can pivot it to a graphical view. So we're more than happy to host some more of those demonstrations um, through the coalition or, or other means. We've actually gone to the SWIFT. Um, I don't think we did a demo at the SWIFT, but we definitely shared this information. So any forms that we can engage in to get the word out and demo how, the, how it is used, uh, my team and I are, are willing. Hey, Jerry, not to, uh, well, I'm gonna put you on the spot, so I'm not gonna say I'm not going to, but I am. So I think the uh, offering this at the SWIFT is great. And also to Michael's point, making the SWIFT um, processes, uh, agenda, meetings available, I think is a great opportunity for us to improve our outreach. Uh, on this effort, and I, you know, maybe something to consider is that maybe we can provide it as part of an artifact of this discussion to reference people to the right sources and get them access to the swim. Um, once you get into those websites, you can get lost really quickly in a lot of data. So it'd be nice to get some highlights for people where to go for more information and then offer the briefings, like you said, for the API at, at these uh, very useful forums. Yeah, the folks who are in charge on the FA side of um, hosting and planning and organizing, organizing the SWIFT are constantly in communication with us, looking for us to come. And I really have been holding that off because I felt the AIS coalition, coalition was the, the forum that we were engaging with. And I wanted to deliver the promise there first and then embark on some of those other forums. Yeah, we, we appreciate that, Jerry. And I think we can we can figure out a way that we can marry those activities and make sure that folks are directed to the right forum. And we can we can certainly figure that out and get them the, the data, right? Get them directed. I do believe we have somebody who wants to chime in. George uh, Shavian, and forgive me if I'm saying your last name wrong, but uh, if you want to go off mute and, and go ahead and ask questions, we'd love to hear from you. Oh, hey, good afternoon. I, I'm with uh, MCO Operations, but my question was answered. Um, I was just looking for that acronym. So it's uh, GeoJSON. That's all. I'm, I'm trying to work on um, uh, integration of this kind of data. Now that you guys are telling us it's open source, we're looking for incident management software that we want to kind of like consolidate, um, like the graphical representations and a lot of the things you're talking about in one place. So when we activate our emergency operations center, I want to be able to at least like whatever software we end up with, I wanna be able to like maybe click a tab and then tap into your feed. So as we're closing things on the airfield, I'm looking forward to be, be able to show our executives in the EOC like a graphical depiction of the different areas we're closing as we issue notes real time. So um, I, I see the link is in ArcGIS, which is uh, uh, software we use here, but we're also working with Esri on GIS as well. So I'm just, I'm just trying to get some information for information technology in my department or in my organization so we can get that going. So it's very helpful. Thank you. Great. Thanks so much, George. We're glad you chimed in. Maybe uh, I don't see any other hands at the moment. So we do have quite a few more in the, in the chat box. Jill, let me pose one to you if you don't mind. The, the process of crossing over FA NOTAMs into the IKO format is a manual process uh, that's performed by the US uh, NOTAMs office. Um, when can we expect the FA IKO NOTAM crossover process to become automated? 
And then um, I think that that was previously expected to occur around January, 2022. And of course, COVID has played into all of those timelines. So may maybe you have some insights there to share with us. Yeah, so they're correct. Currently it, it is a manual process, but as we've talked about, we're going from to a singular system from USNS to FNS, and then we'll go into IKO format. So at that time when that occurs, then this manual crossover won't need to be occurring. And any updates to these crossovers will, will be aligned with the IKO policy adoption. So once we make this transition and we go to IKO, then this will happen automatically. So yeah, the 22 date just got pushed like everything did with COVID. So um, we're just having to work with that and be flexible until we can get this accomplished. Right. James, you wanna tackle? There was, yeah, one around, um, Wait, it's, it's difficult to keep up with all the questions flowing through here. I'm IT challenged for sure today. So um, yeah, good questions around the um, the swing back too that I can get to as well. Um, the have users needs been uh, have user needs studies been done to determine which interface format would be most useful and widely adopted, and any uh, industry input on that. Um, you know, Brian Smith asked that question. You know, Heidi, I'd love to get your perspective on that. Is there uh, as, a, as the co-lead here for us? I don't know that we've, we've. Uh, I know NPA specifically has not done any user needs studies. I know that recently AOPA conducted um, some NOTAM surveys. So I, I don't know if Jim McClay is on with us. He might want to jump into this discussion. Um, I know that it's, it's really difficult from an industry perspective to say one specific format is exactly what all of the industry needs, right? And Michael, I'm, you could speak to this. Airline needs are different than business aviation needs are different than a, a typical GA user flying recreationally and what they need. Um, thoughts, Michael? I, I, I don't wanna speak for all industry here. No, I, I would say for needs and end data, yes, that's the same. But I think, I think at the point where the FAA is at and we're pushing towards the IKO format for NOTAMs is a, is a big deal for us. Um, we operate globally. Uh, we operate with other NOTAM feeds and NOTAM systems that are all in the IKO format. Um, I'm looking forward to the time in the next year to two years where all NOTAMs are, look the same and are in the IKO format. Uh, for me, as an end user of NOTAMs and what we give out to the pilots and, and our dispatchers, we all find it easier to read an uh, IKO NOTAM than we do a, a domestic NOTAM because we've had our eyes trained on how to read it and how to get our eyes to that format uh, quickly and easily to get the information that we need out. Um, as I said, we have our, our NOTAM database. We have ways within Delta to go ahead and uh, change colors on terms filter out NOTAMs that uh, our, flight, our flight ops department doesn't exactly need. Um, for example, we at Delta don't need a helicopter NOTAM. And so we don't provide helicopter NOTAMs to our flight crew. We're not a helicopter-based airline. Um, things like that we do on the, on the, uh, on the you know, end, end side in our database. But for, for us, I feel it's important for us to have just a, a standard global NOTAM format for all of us to operate in. Yeah, yeah. and we do that's, have Jim McClay's great. hand up too, if you want, yeah. Jim, you want to offer, come on, mute. Uh, yeah, thanks for letting me jump in. Um, so yeah, we, as, uh, as Heidi mentioned, um, we just recently did a survey uh, of some of our members on, on the topic of NOTAMs and, and this, this particular thing came up. Um, according to our, our data we got back, about 71% of users, this is general aviation, obviously, 71% uh, utilize electronic flight bags to check NOTAMs prior to flight. So, uh, you know, that's a pretty sizable majority um, from, from this, this sample, at least in particular, um, that would kind of put the focus on that particular interface type. That, that seems to be where most folks are going. Um, you know, following that, we had uh, let's see a combination between flight service web and uh, FAA's NOTAM search was about 19%. Uh, 
Um, so if you look at um, the, the, those websites combined with electronic flight bags, we're um, basically around 90% of that. That's how folks are checking NOTAMs. Um, there are some other, some other information as well, and I, I don't want to uh, talk too long, but just in terms of format, um, as that plays into this, uh, vast majority of, of uh, users look at NOTAMs in decoded format, not raw. Uh, from the general aviation side of things. So um, that's actually potentially some, some good news as we look at the ICAO transition uh, coming up here uh, in another couple of years. Um, you know, with ICAO NOTAMs obviously, obviously will be able to be translated into plain English, uh, just like NOTAMs now are. Uh, and if we have a, a pretty good majority, a large majority of folks that are looking at decoded NOTAMs, then Potentially, the transition to ICAO may not be as problematic for at least folks uh, that are that are in that majority um, looking at decoded. So, hope that might be uh, helpful. And also, add on to what Jim said um, about using these um, these EFBs uh, with my with my personal flying and all that. Uh, these EFB companies are doing an amazing job with what they take from the NOTAM feed and really putting what they feel is the most important NOTAMs on top, the runway closures and all of that. And, you know, if it's a runway symbol, you have a nice runway symbol next to it to say, hey, this is a runway NOTAM or, hey, this is a taxiway NOTAM. Um, like I said before, it's going back to the industry partners taking the data in molding it to what an end user would see. And I feel that that's the important part. Yeah, great points. We do have a question here that I'm gonna pose to you, Alex. Um, I should have asked you as a pilot, what's your perspective on getting NOTAMs in the cockpit too, but we'll shift to this next question. Um, when or is the NFDC slash ADIP um, data, when will it be available via SWIM? So the NFDC data um, is available via the Aeronautical Common Service or ECS, um, which is accessible via the NHG today uh, or through the Enhanced Film Cloud Service in the, the coming future. That response to that provide data and axiom, which uh, is not um, from a graphical perspective is GML, uh, graphical markup language is how the axiom standard is, is set. Thank you very much. Excellent. So Jill, another one for you. Are, are you able to provide us a list of the FA domestic NOTAMs that are not crossed over into the IKO format? Is that something that, that we could provide um, participants with? Yeah, so um, you got a little help on that. So the answer is yes. So the NDS message when you look at the, the NOTAM distribution service does include an element that talks to the crossover NOTAM identifier when it is present. So that's one good way to see if there is a corresponding crossover NOTAM for a domestic NOTAM. I think some information we could possibly share is which type we do crossover because there's just certain keywords that we will cross over and that might help as well. So people can see that if it's this type, it will be crossed over. So we can provide that information. That would be helpful, I think, for many in the industry. And so, so maybe an, another one for you. Um, instead of the need of decoding, why not make NOTAMs plain language instead of contractions? So again, I'm getting again help from the back from the back group here. So um, so the the capability of different states and their systems has to be taken into consideration. So. So increasing the number of characters with plain language actually increases the number of pages of notams. So it kind of ruins, <laughs> ruins the idea if we get multiple pages of notams. So, you know, of course we are looking to um, decrease the number of notams. We want to keep notams for safety, but we're looking to decrease the number of notams so that we can get the situation either published or put into a, a document. Um, and some of that will be discussed a little bit further along when we talk about the airport NOTAMs. So we don't want to increase the length of each NOTAM at this, at this time because we, and ICAO does have standard abbreviations that we have to utilize. Um, some of them are, they're limiting them to certain ones to be used in a NOTAM. Uh, so they're going to, the abbreviations and the contractions are going to continue to be used. So um, also note that 
along with domestic and ICAO formats, the FA already provides notes in plain language in note of search. So you can see them that way. It's just, um, like I said, we don't want to make the notes any longer by making it a completely plain language, but we do provide that. You can see the note of search. Bit of a double-edged sword, right? We want yeah. uh, we want all of it spelled out for us, but we want less volume and, and only that's pertinent to us. So, so but in, in all slope honesty, to follow. <laughs> right. But as an operator, I mean, we've had plain language format for well over two decades, right? Uh, the, the commercial industry and marketplace does that for us. But Michael, I'd like to bring you into this discussion on the plain language format. Do you at Delta provide plain language format to your operators? And, and if so, kind of what are the benefits or? We, uh, we still print our notums for every single flight at the gate. So we do not provide plain language. Uh, all of our notums come out in a raw format and, you know, obviously our pilots know how to read them. Same thing with our, our dispatchers. But uh, what Jill said about, about length and volume, um, if you go to a pre uh, a plain language format for us, you would be increasing character count, you'd be increasing length. And, you know, our uh, we already have a lot of notums that we need to print out already for our, our our pilots, and now you're adding, you know, feet upon feet of more paperwork if we go into uh, plain language. Um, I have a picture with a, a good friend of mine who took the flight release on an international flight and stretched it down the aisle of the aircraft, and they got almost to the midpoint of the aircraft with the entire release with all of the with all of the flight plan paperwork, the fuel burn, and all of the notums that were associated with that flight, they got half the length of the airplane with just the, the paperwork they had. So uh, from our standpoint still, now we at Delta, we move into an electronic flight bag here, hopefully relatively soon. Uh, but for us, we, we're very happy with the, the short formed abbreviated IKO abbreviation notums. And that goes back with Jill said, you know, we deal with multiple states. We, you know, every single country issues their own notums, and we like that single format and that common, common abbreviations when it comes through for notums. Thanks, Michael. That's valuable feedback, and I think it goes back to you know one one format and one use of the data doesn't work for every user, right? Some folks only want the plain language. Some it just really doesn't make sense to receive it in, in plain language. You want the abbreviated version. James, I think over to you, sir. For We've got a couple of follow-ups to you, Jerry, um, just when you thought you could keep yourself muted, um, to you and your team on the API. Um, if we could circle back to that for, the, for a second. Can we just go over again because I've watched the numbers on the call go from 99 to 300, back to 200. What the three formats are for the API, and um, and if our team is there available to put up a, an aid for you, I'm sure we could. But could we just quickly go over that again? Absolutely. So the three formats that we provide uh, data via the API are the um, Axum 5.1 format, the Geo JSON. Format again, um, speaking to the you know graphical piece, as well as our legacy ADAP format, and so that particular one there was targeted for. As many of you know, we've been working with users to transition them off of ADAP and onto the Swim fee. So we thought in this API uh, first rollout we would offer that legacy format, just again, to aid with the transition and the timing and the comfort of users. So that is one of the three formats, um, Axum 5.1, GeoJSON, and the legacy ADAP. Um, in terms of query, because I see that, I don't know if you're, that's your next yeah. one, but um, the yeah. different query filter, a few options there, um, definitely supports a user to be able to query on uh, location. I think I got some graphics here and my questions. My question went away. <laughs> um, so the graphics, I mean, the query functionality there is based on um, location, meaning, you know, particular air, uh, airport. Um, um, the chat went away. Hold on. I got to find the chat again. So I don't have all this in my memory. 
Um, so yeah, the different query functions are based on location, uh, nodem type uh, classification, the five different types of nodems, um, the location and nodem number, effective start and end dates, uh, feature types such as runway, taxiway, um, geometry search uh, such around the radius, um, and then nodems from a um, from a particular date. So quite a few options there in terms of the API query and, and filter capability all around the, the purpose of trying to help you refine your search and refine your results. Perfect, and Jim McClay has his hand up. Jim, did you wanna contribute to some of this conversation on this topic or was it for a different topic? Yeah, James, sorry about that. I, I had my hand up from a, a moment ago with uh, the uh, raw decoded uh, topic, but uh, we can circle back to that. I don't want to interrupt this part of the conversation. Okay. Good deal. No, I appreciate that. Thank you, Jerry, for a quick summary. And again, we'll make some of these uh, materials available to folks so that they can access it. And uh, now that we have the green light to uh, activate the API site, um, there'll be lots of guidance and information available there for the folks to download and to better understand. Uh, James, maybe we could ask the audience a little bit of a question. Um, and what I, I think I'm really curious to find out if we have any third party developers who are serving the GA community, specifically probably the AOPA's community, to speak to their view on how they can help GA pilots better uh, get better end state products, right? So probably deciphering, decoding, plain language. Maybe it's, it's a graphical representation, any or all of those products. Do we have any third party developers that would like to maybe speak to that? Um, yes, here, uh, Dominic Schreiber from uh, Garmin. Fantastic. Uh, Go ahead, Dr. Dominic. Yeah, so um, what, what we're basically trying to do is to boil down uh, the most important nodems for a GA pilot whenever, uh, basically based on the context of the pilot. So for example, we want to filter out the most important nodems um, when a pilot views a GA airport. So that could be runway closures, that could be uh, a fuel unavailability or whether or not this aerodrome is closed or when an aerodrome is closed that we just simply uh, show it on the moving map. So uh, the graphical aspect is very important in digesting these these huge amounts of of nodems. Also in the terminal area to depict as as much information visually as possible. Um, and we agree that IKEA nodems are super important because just the queue line offers so many um, additional information that 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 simply helps us helps us in the classification and in the visualization um, of, of, of nodems. So for example, we could use the scope of the queue line just to filter out all the IFR nodems for a VFR pilot um, and so on. So um, we definitely support this that switch. In terms of decoding um, the nodem text itself, I mean, this is something we can we can process on the client side. So we just need a dictionary from your end um, that is official, and uh, that basically um, you know gives us what we can expect. And based on that dictionary, we can make the decoding automatically, um, and even offer it as an option to the pilot. So some pilots prefer it to be encoded. Uh, some uh, like to have it in plain text and we can simply then make the switch. Um, yeah, that's my initial reaction to, to your question. It's really helpful, Dominic, appreciate it. Do we have any other vendors who would like to weigh in and kind of offer some thoughts here? Salvador has his hand up, Heidi. Uh, go right ahead, Salvador, jump right on in. Uh -oh. We're not hearing you. I don't know if you have a maybe a double mute. You might have gone gone to mute and hit and hit leave. But uh, let's come back to a 
Jim McClay. Uh, yeah, so a couple of things. I, I just wanted to, to follow up with what Dominic just said a minute ago. The, the um, idea of um, uh, the concept of raw versus decoded, uh, I had neglected to mention it earlier. Um, it's a, a, about an 88% response rate on our survey that show that they uh, read um, um, decoded notams. So that's a, a pretty, pretty healthy uh, amount. Um, but beyond that, I wanted to just uh, point out one other thing. Um, there's, if, again, from just the results that we got from the survey, we had well over 80% of pilots that indicated they find it difficult to understand NOTAM impacts. So I, I think that really does underline what we're talking about here. Um, we, can, we can get into uh, discussions about decoding terminology, abbreviations, things like that, but I don't know that that necessarily covers all of it. Um, we, we saw also about a third of respondents in our survey indicating that they have difficulty understanding the impact or even understanding the NOTAMs in decoded format. So in other words, even after the NOTAM has been decoded, they're still having difficulty um, understanding how the NOTAM impacts them. So I think that just drives another aspect of the conversation in, in terms of making sure that not just the, the terminology, the the, um, the code that NOTAMs are in, but actually the content of the NOTAMs, what's being communicated is, is being written in such a way that is that makes sense to pilots, that's understandable and logical to pilots. And Jim, that, I mean, it could also speak to maybe some education and outreach that we need to do as an industry, right? I think it, it, it could be a little bit of both but it might also speak to Brian's suggestion, suggestion earlier that maybe we need some cognitive studies to, to better understand this. So could be some work that, that we could do uh, jointly um, on that. Yeah, and I'll add, Absolutely. I, agree. I'll, add, I'll add to that, Heidi. I think, you know, the, the, in, the difficult thing for us to get our hands on here is if we're trying to move the needle on accuracy, availability, and timeliness, right? And accessibility, in my mind, includes getting the ones you need and not the ones you don't, right? Um, knowing how to measure that access is really difficult for us because there's layers between us and the end consumer, the pilot, making the decisions to fly. So any information that the industry is willing to share, or even third-party developers are willing to share, and I think I can say this um, with some degree of confidence here, even if it must be shared with us under a confidentiality request or proprietary request, helps us as the agency better understand how are we moving that end state goal, which is to help pilots get what they need and, and nothing more. <laughs> and, and to Michael's point, if we could make that paperwork printout be, you know, just to the first class cabin would be decent, right? So I don't know that you're in the business of surveying your pilots often, Delta, uh, but, but I know that you've got lots of information that can help us along with all of your industry partners. So I'll just put an open request out here, not necessarily for today's forum, but definitely in our coalition meetings, I'd love for us to see what you see on the end state, because then we can start building metrics on our end to measure NOTAMs and see if we're changing what we want to change in the way that's useful to you all. Yeah, fantastic. I think we're going to jump over to Salvador. We, we missed uh, getting to you, Salvador. Sorry. Salvador. All right. Uh, yeah, so so I'm Salvador Velasco from NABLU, and um, I just wanted to say that, you know, it, you know all, the, all the contributions that have been uh, mentioned so far is something that we are, uh, you know, also looking into. And I would say, for instance, you know, in, in, in our case, in NABLU, we are looking into, for instance, uh, cross-referencing the geographical information from NOTAM. So I'm quite excited about this capability that we're gonna have on, on the API now. Uh, you know, cross-referencing the geographical information of NOTAMs into the FIR information that we have in flight plans, for example. So uh, effectively uh, trying to, to, to have great accuracy and reducing the number of NOTAMs that we may have in the, in the flight plan papers, for example. So, uh, and also feeding into the AFB, if EFB, sorry. Um, so, so yeah, absolutely. So I think the more, and I and I quite agree with uh, with, uh, with what Delta was saying before, that uh, uh, you know it, it, the, the, we need to have a very strong um, data feed, you know, from NOTAS and other aeronautical information, and then the, you know basically the sky is the limit into what we can do if we have that. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you for the feedback, Salvador. Glad mm -hmm. you were able to jump on. 
Uh, Michael, I think you were going to say something before we went to Salvador, uh, so maybe we'll go over to you next. I was just going to say to just the gym that we don't really need to survey our pilots about the length of notums or notums that they see. They're pretty vocal on their own. Right. <laughs> we, we don't really need to survey them. They, uh, they have a whole, uh, whole group upstairs that deals with notums and, and pilots. And uh, yeah, they, our, our, uh, our pilots are very vocal about notums and things that they want to see and they don't want to see. Yeah, it's great. Our feedback is rich on our end too. <laughs> agree. Yes. Thank you. James, it sounds to me like we have at least one IOU for the coalition, right? I think it's, yeah. it's maybe gathering all of that data up. Michael sounds like he has his on hand, right, from his pilots. Jim from AOPA just did a survey. We've had some good feedback today. So let's make sure that's a, an agenda topic for one of our upcoming meetings. We got it. I can hear Anthony typing away in my back of my mind. <laughs> right. Uh, thank you. So maybe uh, another question for Jerry. We, we let you go, go, go off the hook uh, too long, Jerry, right? Um, can the graphical notums be applied to all active notums closures and not only depict closures in excess of 24 hours? Yes, okay. So I certainly have had some help from my, my team here. And the answer that is provided is, while the manual construction notice diagram process have updates on a 24-hour basis due to manual mapping process, there is no restriction when the FNS deploys the construction notice restriction di diagram updates this fall. So we're coming out with a release this fall of FNS that will automate this uh, depiction and diagram. So whenever a notum that meets criteria, this criteria will be included in the diagram for airports that have begun to use that functionality. So we, we will have to um, bring each airport up, well, bring users up on a phased process once we deploy this automated depiction capability. But as they bring on that new release, they will then have that, that capability to bring in the graphical. Which feed is that via if, uh, for those? That is available, I believe, and um, that's available via um, the, in, the NOTAM, NPS NOTAM speed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Maybe related and, to that, Jerry, there's um, there are currently a lot of opportunities, I guess we'll say for human error um, with just text-based NOTAMs with the support of graphical NOTAMs specifically transmitting their geometry, right? Will there be any limitations that can be provided for geometry and the quantity and overall area? Okay, so I'll have to let my folks uh, work on a response to that one in terms of the limitations of the open API capability. And, it, and at your discretion, Jerry, if you want somebody in your team to come on, come off mute, feel free. It's a group conversation. So. Yeah, so if my uh, team members, Vinod or Shailene, have an answer, please come off mute, raise your hand. But in the meantime, I will go back and clear up an answer that I provided. Um, uh, James, you asked the question, where would that capability be available around the automation of the, and it's in Notum Manager Notum and Manager. Notum Search. So I, I'm, I'm corrected on that. Thank you. Okay. I ask mostly for myself because I'm trying to keep track. We have one, we're moving to a single repository, but we still have different ways people can digest the data. So thank you. So uh, for, for uh, Shailene, Sh her Shailene has her hand raised, so let's let her help me out a little bit here. Absolutely, Jerry. Um, so yeah, so in terms of being able to, you know, create more um, uh, notums in terms of the, uh, reducing notum or user error, excuse me. Um, so for those airports uh, that use FNS's notum manager application, there's actually a digital dropdown that creates uh, policy compliant notums and there's uh, significant validation within that workflow. Um, so there, um, those notums are able to, um, you know, go through there with uh, much less uh, human, error, human error in the process. And the majority of the highest uh, notum producing airports are already using um, FNS's notum manager application. Um, and we continue to deploy that out to additional airports um, to move that validation um, uh, functionality to even more users. And maybe a setup for our airports section. 
Um, Shailen, if you know that, you know, what's the volume in number of airports that aren't able to use graphical and what uh, can we do as a community to move that number up so that more of the general aviation users specifically that go to those smaller or less frequented airports can get access to the same easy visualization tools that others might get at a major airport. Yeah, um, it varies. Uh, I think there's over um, 2,000 or so airports that are currently using Nota Manager. I, I can validate and come back with a, a more uh, uh, specific number, um, but it's quite a few that are using that today. I'm going to maybe ask one. I don't know if this is, is for Jill, but I, I think a really good one because I've seen this one in a number of you times. Any suggestion? Open mic out there. Ezra, I think uh, you're there. We go. Um, so, Jill, and I think this is for you. Forgive me if it's not. How do we avoid duplicate notums? And a good example of this is a procedure is notumed not available, and maybe a more recent notum raises the minimums for the same procedure that came from our chat from Michael in our chat. But I've also seen that. Do, is there a way that we can avoid that, or how do we resolve? So I guess it also depends on which type of notums that we're looking at. If we're looking at FDC, which I'm assuming we are because we're looking at procedural type notums. So um, they're different scenarios. So normally we would not like to do that. We would rather have a situation, let's say the procedures in a, um, or let's just say the minimums are raised. Let's go the reverse order. The minimums are raised and then something happens where you have to enter the procedure. Well, we should cancel the procedures, the minimums that have raised and just have the procedure NA type notum. And then uh, this work is done via aeronautical information services who would then document say, once that issue, that circumstance is gone, then we need to issue this other notum that raises the minimums back up. If that makes logical sense right there. So it's just a case of, like we said, there's numerous, numerous, numerous notums in the system, and sometimes this will get just missed. So this is just something we need to relay back, which I'll re relay back to our organization, is that we just have to keep an eye when we're doing that, because it does cause confliction, but we also issue notums based on the singular circumstance. So you're not going to have a notum that's out there for uh, this circumstance, and okay, well, that one's done, so now Let's issue this other one. They, they could be in conflict, but they have different time frames. So if you have a crane, for example, this crane is going to be up during this time, and then another crane comes along, but it's up during different hours. So we try to just conglomerate everything together. But in that situation that they brought up, I think it's just more of a case of us uh, paying closer attention to the notums that are out for that particular airport. So it's, it's a situation that you know we try to fix, but again, human. Human fault falls in there as well, where we sometimes miss items. It would only you. take the timing to be off on one of those to make it more complicated and yeah. difficult to understand. So it's, it's a very uh, rigorous process, but there, there are ones that get through. And to a point raised earlier, as um, I learned more and more about NOTAMs in this job, um, and it was a point raised earlier that the NOTAMs that are unimportant to others are critically important to some. And um, the difficulty and the challenge, and I think also the, the objective and the optimism at the same time is the contextuality around the NOTAM that comes with ICAO and other things affords the innovation to tailor the NOTAM to the type aircraft, the type procedure they're running, the type operation they're trying to accomplish. So um, that's a, a, a good question. Yeah. We, we do have another one regarding human error that just came in from Raymond. Uh, is there an extra effort regarding making sure the ICAO based notums are using the correct Q code? It's a great way to help prioritize notums, but only if it's set correctly, right? Yep. Um, can somebody from Jill, your team, take that one? We can also bring up the ICAO panel later, which we, we can see yeah. that. Out. We're, we're getting quite a few that probably are really pertinent for that IKO panel. So if we want to hold some of them, we can certainly do that. So Camille Baker from Camille our Baker. US NOTAM office has, has popped on here and she'd be the best person to help us answer that question. So Camille can take it away. 
Hi, yes, I think I can answer that one. Um, we are analyzing a lot of NOTAM data and QCO data over the past few years and really trying to drill down exactly the QCOs that we have been and should be using. And then that data, data will be rolled into the system so that when we are issuing the ICAO NOTAMs, we're assigning the correct Q codes and that should reduce the um, potential for the human error. Thank you very much. Uh, while we were while we were talking, um, Steve responded that as of this morning, there are 1,628 U.S. airports active on U.S. NOTA Manager. Um, so that's, thank you for that. Um, there was a question earlier that I answered in the private response, but I made a note to make sure I mentioned it in the public response. It's not as stimulating as these current conversations, but the question was if we had another disaster in Oklahoma City, and I really wish we would stop saying that. Um, for all of those that keep um, bringing the bad karma to light, um, the, it, what would, there was a swing over and there's a swing back. So the, if we had to go to our alternate disaster recovery location, and we do mean disaster um, recovery, it is a uh, approximately a six days of planning, including taking the databases that would now be synced in New Jersey and manually, in many cases, getting that data synchronized with Oklahoma City so the terabytes of data needed to transfer would take us days, uh, but we would still be running in the New Jersey uh, configuration. The actual cutover, about two hours approximately. Um, the challenge on all these things is that uh, those aren't exercises that we run. We've done them on paper exercises, but the swing over and swing back would be uh, a combined four hours of no notums in the NAS. So we're not likely to exercise those in a live environment. Much like we don't exercise our ATC facilities going ATC zero, um, because that is an enormous disruption to the mass. Uh, we have plans and procedures, and we write them, and we uh, exercise the procedures from a tabletop perspective, but the execution of them, uh, we hopefully will never need to experience. But we're practicing them on paper regardless, and uh, hoping that the best restoration hope for all of this is making sure we harden the Oklahoma City system and they finished construction on that building. They finished the roof here recently. So our risk levels have gone dramatically down about having any major disaster like that ever again. Thanks, James. It's helpful. So I'm wondering if, you know, we've had a number of questions over the, the last probably 20, 30 minutes on ICAO panel. That's our next panel, right? So we're, we're planning to reconvene at, at 1.30 for that panel. But maybe it's a good time to um, maybe think through a little bit of all of the questions we've just done, summarize where we are. So um, James, thoughts here on, uh, I think we have a couple IOUs for the coalition, right? Um, I, I think there's a few for the FAA team, but what are you thinking? Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Um... You know, thematically, what I've heard here, which is why I'm glad we committed so much time to this forum, is it's not all, it's oftentimes around the, the bits and the bytes, the data formats, how to get it, what formats are we using, what's the best website, what's the linkages, that's all critical. But what's underneath all of this that, I'm, that I've seen the theme, which is not new, is how do I make that data relevant and how do I make sure it's accurate and I can rely on it? Um, and every time we have a blip, an error, um, a bad coding, an international flight plan that comes in that we don't control, that is loaded full of incorrect, incorrect information, or where we miss the timing of a NOTAM. I think as a community, we feel this erosion of confidence in the predictability of these things. And I emphasize uh, greatly, of course, with our um, aviation commercial partners who have a dispatch statutory relation, our responsibility to make sure they get the latest information. And for the GA pilots out there that might have to divert to airports they don't normally go to, to have access to that information and know that the air traffic controllers have access to it accurately. Um, so thematically, we're, we're not done, but I do think that we, we're working, on, we've been working on some of the right areas, like reducing the noise in the system, perm notum, staying focused on making a better system we can build on, and really our eyes on ICAO. But was uh, one of the big takeaways for me in this discussion as well is if we're trying to reduce the noise in the NOTAMs and therefore hopefully avoid missed NOTAMs or misunderstood NOTAMs, um, leveraging your, com your community's perspective on what makes those metrics, those needles on the dashboard move, 
making things more understandable, more timely, more accurate, more relevant. Getting that knowledge back to us helps us figure out what can we do on our end in terms of data distribution. But I will go back to something set it up in the middle of the session today, and I think it was resounded, resounding agreement there. We can't and shouldn't probably be building applications and interfaces and unique designs for every single instantiation of every user need. Uh, my expectation on that is we would never be able to keep up. And also we lose this great opportunity to leverage innovation of industry. What we have to get better inside the agency is uh, the quality, the control, the policy, the timeliness and the accuracy of what we are chartered to submit to all of you. So um, we, you know, from a quality inspection control process, we do a great job and kudos to uh, all of AGVA and Camille's team specifically that does an amazing job every day of trying to keep up with, what do we say, 80,000 a month or so, Jill? Um, that it's a large workload. So they do a great job. But understanding we fixed a quality issue is not the same as understanding how that quality issue affected you all or where we could have done better. Um, so the last thing I'll say is a continued plug for the coalition discussions. You know, Heidi, I'm encouraged by this conversation. I know you and I have talked about shifting those coalition discussions to be more like this, this interactive conversation, which is really helpful. And I know that everybody on the FA team that's on this call today has received a lot of rich um, perspective that that we uh, we can benefit from. So yeah. Really good discussion. I, I agree. So maybe just a couple of thoughts coming out of this. It seems like there's energy and excitement around the API, right? But also some questions. And, and Jerry, you've done a great job of tackling those today. I do think the um, the suggestion or recommendation for maybe some additional demos for the API would be a, a great idea. I think we'll work that through the coalition, figure out what makes sense, Jerry, with your team, and, and we'll gladly get you know the opportunity uh, out out to the industry so they know when those opportunities exist and in which format, right? Whichever format, whether that's coalition or SWIFT or wherever it needs to take place. But I, I do think there's still some, some help there that the industry can go through and some feedback that they're offering that I think is valuable, right? We've heard had some great feedback today. I think there's also still some questions maybe from the vendor community around what users and operators ultimately want and need. And I think we as industry could do a better job at helping provide that feedback. So I, I think you know, whether it's Jim from AOPA sharing his entire summary of their NOTAM survey or Michael providing us feedback from the folks at Delta and other airline partners that are a valuable part of our coalition who could bring data to us and share information that might help us in our modernization efforts. So just a couple of IOUs I heard today um, and I think really valuable. I think there are a number of questions that we touched on in this panel that I think are going to be uh, highlights of the next IKO panel. So I'm looking forward to that panel. I believe we're going to take a break from now through 1.30. The, the uh, Zoom will remain up, but you'll see us go off camera and then we'll come back at 1.30 and kick off our IKO panel. So um, James, unless there's anything else that we need to go through, maybe we're at a point of uh, a break. Yeah, uh, I think so. I want to thank the panel. Thanks for uh, volunteering to be here in the hot seat. Thanks for all those in the background who are sending questions and collecting questions. Um, and because not everybody's going to be in every session, I'll try to remember to thank in every session the people behind the scenes that make these kind of forums possible. This is not a goodbye for the day, so don't read it that way. Please don't go anywhere. Just come back. Um, to you, Heidi, thank you, of course, and to Anthony, Nicole, uh, Jen, uh, Jill, Lauren, you know, the whole team that is behind the scenes making this look um, as good as they can make me look. Um, it's, uh, I, I thank you all very much for that work and support behind the scenes. And like you said, we'll come back. You'll see a banner on this page that'll show that we're on a break and look forward to discussing, diving into the international world when we come back. Thank you.